Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. Today I thought we'd do a tutorial on making some simple but yet realistic looking trees by using one tool. Mm -hmm. Something you might not have thought of. Some people might have thought about it, but some people might look at this tool and say, what do you do with it? So I'm going to show you what you can do with it. And that is a sea sponge. Now you've probably seen these in craft stores and art supply stores and you're wondering how do people use this thing? for watercolor or painting. And I'm gonna show you how you use it to create lush green trees and even some nice fall foliage. It's really simple, easy to use. Any beginner to do, can use this and even experienced painters use this as well. I mean, there's so many versatile uses with the sea sponge. I show you my wet and wet game changer trick, um, how I use a sea sponge. And it's also great to create textures, just a lot of fun. You can create some great abstracts with this little guy. And you can pick this up at any craft supply store and art supply store. So let me know what you think about a sea sponge. If you've used it or not used it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. So without further ado, let's paint some trees using the sponge. All right, peeps, for this uh, demonstration, I'm gonna go over some supplies that I have. I'm just using a block from Fabiano. It's 100% cotton. You don't have to use expensive paper to play around with this, but I'm using it from my intense purposes here today. I have a, like a, a enamel tin. You want a wide surface like this wide to use the sea sponge in. <laughs> um, so you can, you know, obviously get the area with the sea sponge. And of course, water and paper towels close by. So I have just a bunch of colors here. My cadmium yellow deep, um, cadmium red light, peacock blue, cobalt blue, Prussian blue, burnt umber, and paints gray. And of course, they'll always be in the description box. And I'm just gonna start off by mixing up some greens first. So I use yellow and peacock, see how we get that nice light green. We can put that same green here and add Prussian blue, get a deeper green, and then sometimes I add in some burnt umber, get even darker greens. It's always good to mix up your colors first. You can add more blue in there. You even throw in some paints gray. So we're going to work on this a couple of different ways. You can use the sea sponge to put, you know, wash in the color too. So here we go. I'm going to loosen up some of this cobalt for the sky. All right. So many different ways you can do this. Just going to loosen this up. So first, just get your sponge wet. Now you can put it on an angle if you want by lifting it up. I'm going to lift it up with my paints here. And so you can just, like, I had to talk about this with the, one of the um, game changer wet and wet tricks. You just wet whatever part you want here. I'm just going to go in here and wet it on this one side. By the way, I put a tape down the middle so I can do two different, you know, kind of paintings to show you. Why wow, this, this tool is amazing, right? Now you can just go ahead and grab the blue with this tool. Start putting in some sky. Now you might want to dip in some more water. You don't even need a paintbrush for this. Just dip in the sky. I know it seems kind of crazy and erratic with the with the watercolor, but it's fun to play with. Just putting this pigment in here. Now unlike a brush make it little dabs of color. So I'm grabbing some of the um, concentrated color here <clears throat> and I'm putting that up in here and I'm moving it around with my sponge itself. I'm going down here. You want a little bit darker on the top. Grabbing it again. So this is one way to play with it, right? I'm going to clean up my sponge. And I'm going to go in here and just kind of lift up some of the paint coming downward. Now, this is why we have paper towel close by. I'm going to move this paint. It's kind of the pigments are kind of staying there. You can clean up your sponge and use it like we do with the, the brush to remove the paint for clouds. And kind of lift up some of the color. See that? Look at that. We put, we put the paint down. We're going to remove the color. It's just another fun tool to play with. And that'll be our sky. 
Now, if you want to go in and grab your brush, I have my Princeton 10 here. Please, by all means, use that for that. Just throw in some color. Boop, 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 boop. Well, we'll be using a brush, by the way, whatever brush you have conveniently around you for putting in the trees, the tree trunks, not the actual tree leaves. So again, you can take this same sponge and start playing with adding in the green land, a little bit darker, or use a brush and grab some water, mixing the colors. I know, it's a little fun. Really just kind of simple. And you can just take the colors and mix them, kind of dab them like so across the paper. So now this is very, 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 very wet. We want to wait till it dries and we can start playing in with putting in the trees. So I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit, let it dry, and we're going to come back. We're going to paint in a tree and then we're going to use this to make the most beautiful, simple, easy leaves. Okay, now that it's dry, there's a bunch of different ways you can do the leaves. You can make like a bush kind of tree. So I might take my pencil and kind of just figure out, just making these little lines in here where I want this tree to go. It's kind of bushy kind of tree. And then we can just put in some simple stems or you can paint the tree. So let's try it this way first. I'm going to grab my sponge. Now I'm going to get it pretty wet. See how I'm grabbing a lot of wetness. And see, you just kind of push that down and then move it around a little bit. And you get that back tree that's very light. And you can see some blue still coming through there, which we want. So you're pushing down and then lifting up. Let's see better if I can show you. Squeeze a little bit. And it's going to just, because it already has this like, formations where it's leaving spaces in the, in the sponge naturally, you're going to see that in the, the paper. Now I can start to add a little bit more color with this bluish green. Got some paints gray in here and some yellow. We're building up that green. See how it looks very natural, doesn't it? Got that peacock blue and the yellow. That's impression blue, even a little burnt umber. See, I'm mixing all this right in the pan here. Just going right in here. Getting more natural. If it's too wet, you can just tap it on a paper towel. And then so the little leaves up here, you see this little part? You just kind of go do, 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 and tap just very gently. And you get those top leaves I grab some more yellow on this one. Right? And down here, a little bush. So it can make nice, nice little bushes, little trees. Got these natural little looking leaves. Right? And I'm going to get a little bit darker again. I got some burnt umber, some Prussian blue. A little more concentrated with this paint in the yellow. That blue again. It's really kind of wet, so I'm going to have to dry my sponge a little bit on the paper towel. Did you see where I'm going with this? Building up the color a little bit. Same thing here. Right? We have more natural looking bushes slash trees. And then when that dries, if it's somewhat dry too, you can actually use your credit card. Try and scrape in some branches. But I might wait till a little bit till it dries a little bit more. It's kind of really damp. And at this point you can also take your brush and play with some of these greens. Coming down here. You know. Fill that in. We create these nice little landscapes. 
I don't take much effort I'm adding this impression blue a little burnt umber on this side get a little darker and again clean up your brush because it's fairly light in the front and just push the color down a little bit here just go downward And have a simple, really simple landscape with really simple trees that kind of look more natural than fake. And you know, you can do this tap tap method with your brush, it doesn't actually look so natural. And adding a little deeper color here, it's a little bit umber, a little Prussian blue, back up a little yellow, a little thicker paint, a little concentrated. You can have little shadows kind of coming from here. See that? That did that, did that take much effort? No. And you have a really kind of pretty landscape. What's also great about this is that you can use this for little flowers. You know, you can take the edge of this, which I'll talk about. First, you might want to grab a smaller brush, a skinny brush, a nice point and some nice greens make mix up some nice greens and you can do some nice little grasses now this paint is still very wet so we're gonna have to play around with that but you can also use a sponge to just make a simple little bl blooms on these little grasses really delicate so I'm gonna let this dry and come back and do our tree so I dried this a little bit more, and I'm going to go back in with my sponge a little bit. This is very kind of greens, too many greens on here. Squeeze it out, all that wetness. I'm going to grab some more of this light green, yellowish green. You can grab the pigment itself. You can see some of it's on there. You can just dab a little bit of that. You want to get that brighter again. See now it looks like nice little nice little leaves without having to do a lot of effort. Just tapping. Tap tap tap. And the same thing with the darker color. So here I'm gonna mix up a darker tone. Go back over this again. And then you have these nice little leaves that are darker. Now you could you could actually take the sea sponge and cut it down smaller if it's easier for you to work with. If it's smaller. See how those little pretty leaves? That's nice. You took that yellow boom, 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 boom. sun hitting this section right there. Nice, right? And then you just grab a nice skinny brush. So I have a Princeton six long round i'm going to grab some of my burnt umber and a little bit of this paint gray and some of the greens i have over here and you can start playing with adding in some of the tree branches all right little v kind of connecting breaking up coming in here we'll add little tree branches same thing over here just a couple little branches kind of peeking through the greenery. So it's a thick tree, a lot of lush greens. Just simple little strokes for this. And you have your tree. And your little trees down here. See that up close. Some dark little tree branches kind of peeking through. You can see that better than that. Yeah, see? Just put the little tree branches. And it looks like a nice lush green tree. So now in the second one, I'm going to show you how we could do some fall looking trees. Right? And remember I talked about down here, you can do some simple little flowers. You now here I'm just going to take the sea sponge, use that watercolor almost concentrated, and you can just tap, 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 tap. And look at that without even using a brush. This is super, super easy. And you have a little field of yellow flowers. Isn't that cute? 
Tap, tap, tap. You can use white too. White would be nice. But see how simple that is? Like I said, you can use little highlights up in here if you want to have some yellowish green trees. The sun's hitting it up there and up here. Boom. All right, let's move on to a different way to do the tree. All right, for the second one, we can do a little blue sky again. This time, you know, I'm gonna wet it again with the sea sponge because we're using the sea sponge. Just go like this. Wet the areas that you want to use to have the blue sky in. All right, and then I'm just gonna lift my paper up a little bit, tilt it. I'm gonna grab this cobalt. Oh, is that the cobalt? I grabbed peacock. <laughs> Oops. Here's the cobalt. I'm liking the cobalt blue for sky. Okay. Can make some ultramarine in there too. <clears throat> Excuse me, ultramarine. Uh, does it not look like cobalt? I don't know what's going on. So I'm just going to grab ultramarine. Okay, guys. Here we go. Ultramarine. We'll just use this color. It's much better. Pay no attention. Now that's a lot of water. I mean, a lot of pigment. So I'm going to try and loosen up some of that pigment. Again, I don't want it so deep blue. I'm just kind of moving it around. I'm leaving some white spaces for clouds. And it didn't even have to be blues. You could put in some nice yellows and reds. Just one in the background. Again, we can use the sea sponge to lift it up for clouds. So I'm going to play around with that. Tap it back on the paper towel. Lift it up. I'm going to lift up some of this paint. And it will dry lighter too, by the way. And you find the sea sponge to come, you know, not working for you with the clouds. You want some really white clouds. Take a paper towel. You can do that and lift up some nice clouds. All right. So we're going to let that area kind of dry a little bit. Meanwhile, we're going to take some of the yellow. We have cadmium yellow deep. I'm going to remove some of this blue paint that I have here. So we're making some like oranges, reds, fall tones, mm. oranges, you know, yellows, reds, browns, all that good stuff. So we have cadmium yellow deep. We've got this red light. Let's mix them together, obviously, make a nice orange. Right, if you want to make a deeper red, you might want to add like a quinacridone magenta to make it a deeper red. I have this red that I don't really use. It's called carmine. Let's play with this today though. Some things you buy, they never end up using. Let's see how this is going to look. Oh yeah, not bad. We'll try and play with this guy today. So for the ground, you can go back and add some greens again. You don't have to. I'm just going to mix in some, just a light green. It's a brownish green here. See, I'm mixing the yellow and the blue, whatever I, go over here, whatever I have over here on this pan. Playing around. You don't even have to put green here. Just kind of throwing it in. And I'm going to add more yellow because I feel like the yellow is going to be predominant. I like the leaves falling. And if I want to remove some of the color again, I'll just take some of the paper towel. Just kind of lift it. Another thing I didn't talk about, which I talk about, I should talk about the sea sponge creates texture. So I'll take some yellow and see texture. Besides making these leaves, texture, texture with the green. Just kind of push it around like this. Texture. All right, I got the blue. Mix it around. You're actually putting the actual pigment on here and kind of mixing it and making the green this way. All these things you can play around with. <laughs> it's very versatile. So I'm just putting just a light color green down just to, you know, for like the land mass. And then I'm going to let these, let this dry and come back. We're going to do some trees. So here we'll just take our browns again, now that it's dry, 
mix up some browns and just start painting in some tree tree branches so we'll start with the trunk it's gonna go like this and then bring it down right this is just like a practice kind of scenario how to use this bunch of trees and then you want to little none excuse me more natural you add some branches this one's coming from the trunk here make the trunk a little thicker and darker All right and then you just want you don't want a lone tree you want to put more trees near it so I'm just kind of doing this rough like loose little tree branches and then of course grab some more paint and we'll make some more over here to balance that and it can be kind of leaning this is a Princeton eight long round you could use the six just doing some simple tree branches I love to paint branches because they're kind of like therapeutic now you don't have to go completely like connect all the branches you can kind of have them breaking off a little bit and I'll explain why because when we put the leaves in with the sea sponge you won't really see how they connect so well we're just going to have them as a guide right now right the way the trees go so I've got like four I don't like to have even numbers in my paintings so I'm going to do one back here so it's like a fifth tree Maybe have a big branch coming off this one. Now you could do birch trees like this as well. We're just doing these simple. So now we have our colors mixed up, the oranges and the reds and the yellow. Get this yellow over here. It's getting too much blue in here. <laughs> one bad thing about having this big pan. And we have the orange and we have that red color. Mixing up some color and then of course, clean our sea sponge from the green, the blue. Squeeze it out, squeeze it in the paper towel, get a little drier, and we'll start using it with the yellow. And look at that, you've got your simple fall leaves. Now, you then I'm just tapping it lightly. If you press down and squish it, then you're going to get more condensed leaves, right? If you want it airy and light, light green looks good too. You want some light green, by the way, in your trees for fall because you don't want it all yellow like that it's not as natural so I'm gonna add some greens in here first as you see but look how simple you can make those trees now I use this I use this side for the yellow I'll switch it on the other side like orange gonna mix up some more paint it dried oh goodness real-time tutorials I do guys okay I mix up some nice using that cadmium red light Get this nice color orange. Like, put some more water in here. Get it really loose. Okay. So we're going back to this. And then now we can just add. Look at that. Do, do, do. Doesn't take any effort. You can get a large amount done pretty quickly. So if you're looking at to do cards or something for friends, this is the best way to go. Go faster. And it looks more natural. Try not to get on that side. <laughs> Right, and then you can, like I said, squishing it down, it'll be more condensed. I want to add the yellow, some green in here, and don't forget to put some on the ground because the leaves will fall on the ground. Right now, I'm just doing a simple tutorial on this, but you can add more or less. And of course, it's the green on the ground. Get the shadows in there too. You see? It's pretty simple with this sponge. I am going to add some more yellow. I feel like we lost the yellow again. Get this yellow really loose. Go back in here and add a yellow leaves on the ground you have a few falling so you just take a little tap they're falling and like I said if you squish down 
push down more it's going to be more condensed like we did here not do not push down and you have these nice light airy leaves on the tree and what did this take us for effort zero super fast right i'm gonna squish down a little with this orange color look how pretty that is i'm gonna do some red this red carmine color and you can add a little brown get that brown amber get a little deeper and this one on that side add a little red and a teeny bit in here look at that <laughs> little tricks use a sea sponge they're so much fun to play with they're super inexpensive you can get them at any craft store online you know if you feel like you want it you know you could have put more green in this in the ground but we didn't do that we can just go add that a little bit and go back over it again with some of the splashes just take a nice little wash going back in here with a little bit of green or you can add some more browns if you don't want it so like pretty green color just taking a little brown just washing in the color here see and I'll lift it up and I'll add some more water down here but this is how simple it is to do this and of course you can go back and finesse your trees you know they can make them a little darker in some areas I'm just doing it quickly but I just want to show you the benefits and you go back in here and little teeny branches and you can make them darker my brown was a little bit lighter you just go back over a little bit areas you know darker on this side because it's pretty dark over here you can add a shadow with your greens deeper greens a little brown maybe a little more brown because it's brown so I'm kind of going this way a little shadow and then we have this cute simple ball and spring tree and all those other Ta -da! so you got two in one <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial using the sea sponge uh, I've been playing with this more often these days and it's such a great way to make natural looking trees you know in the clumped way or more airy way you really just gotta experiment that it. it's super fun I'm gonna grab some more yellow and very easy and fast you know and I showed you how to use it just almost like putting the sky in too and removing the paint there's a lot of uses for this and putting the flowers down here so here's that red put a nice little red flowers going across that's it so I hope you enjoyed the video about the sea sponge um, this is a really great versatile tool comes in handy when doing some great foliage and some trees so really try and play with it it's a lot of fun let me know if you think this is a fun uh, tool to use if you like using it if you never used it leave a comment below I'd love to hear about it so thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you had a great day and enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.